An array variable is a named group of contiguous memory locations. Contiguous means that they are located next to each other. From a programmer's perspective, a one-dimensional array is a list. An array contains a number of elements into which items of data can be placed. Each element has an index number. To declare an array, for example in Visual Basic, you need to specify its name, its data type, and the size, that is, how many elements it will have. To declare an array of five elements, you need to specify a size of four, because the elements are numbered from zero. Arrays are said to be zero-based. To access an element of an array, for example to assign a value to it, or to change its contents, you can refer to the element by its index number. Typically, an array variable is used to store related data items, and a program will access each of these in turn, perhaps to search for a particular item. That's why arrays are normally manipulated with iteration constructs, such as do while or for next loops. An array can have several dimensions, up to 32 in Visual Basic. A two-dimensional array can be visualized as a table with a horizontal X dimension and a vertical Y dimension. The command syntax for declaring a two-dimensional array varies slightly from language to language, but for most languages it's essentially the same. In Visual Basic, the syntax includes a name, the size of each dimension, and the data type. For example, to declare this array with the name people, we would use this command. Accessing an element of a 2D array is just a matter of specifying the correct coordinates. For example, to assign the value foo to the element with coordinates x equals 3 and y equals 2, you would write this command. In this example, each row of the array contains the details of a famous person. To access each item in turn, you need a loop inside a loop. Here, we can see that the outer loop is visiting each of the nine rows one at a time. We're scanning down the vertical Y dimension of the array. But for every pass of the outer loop, there are five passes through the inner loop, so each element within each row is visited in turn. Two-dimensional array variables are particularly useful for holding tabular data such as this. In a real-world application, a 2D array such as this might be initialized with data from a database table. Because the array is memory resonant, any item of data can be accessed very quickly. Here, the array data is being visited row-wise, but scanning column-wise would be a simple matter of swapping around the inner and the outer loops. Of course, the order in which you visit the data depends on what you're trying to achieve. For example, you might scan down the second column to locate a person based on their surname, then fetch the rest of the data in that row if they can be found. Behind the scenes, as is the case with a one-dimensional array, two-dimensional array data items are stored in contiguous memory locations. Well, sort of. The computer's RAM is a linear structure, so two-dimensional array data can't be totally contiguous. It needs to be stored in the RAM either row-wise or column-wise. Which of these depends on the programming language? Here, we can see the priority was to keep the data in each row contiguous. The programming language that set this up is said to be row major. C++, C Sharp and Visual Basic are examples of row major programming languages. The programming language that set this array up in memory, however, is said to be column major. You can see that the priority was to keep the data in each column as close together as possible. Fortran is an example of a column major programming language. Most programmers don't need to concern themselves with the way that array data are physically located in memory. 
But if you're trying to eke out every little bit of performance from an application, you may want to know if your language is row major or column major, and how you intend to iterate through the data. This doesn't mean you have to change your programming language. Rather, you might just think twice about how you declare a two-dimensional array. For example, you could say this, or you could say this.